أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. We continue our theme for this Ramadan: دروس عميقة من السيرة النبوية, profound lessons from the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. Now, it must be realized that when we look at the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, we see a multi-dimensional personality. Whose life is both a history and a biography, whose life is a code of law and a mode of guidance, and in all circumstances, his life is always, always a source of inspiration. Whether as a teacher, or as a leader, as a guide, as an imam, as a commander of the armed forces, as a husband, as a neighbor, as a friend, he came as Usutun Hasana a model of excellence for every dimension of human life. So tonight I want to focus glimpses of the prophetic kindness, prophetic benevolence displayed by him as a, a grandfather. Imam al-Nisai narrated from Abdullah bin Shaddad that his father said, خَرَجَ عَلَيْنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فَإِحْدَى صَلَاتَيْ الْعِشَاء Rasulullah came one of the evenings for the salah, it was either Maghrib or Isha, he says, and he was carrying one of his grandchildren, either Hassan or Hussein. He put the child down and he made takbir and he prayed. And he said something unusual about the prayer was that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in some of the sujood that he made, the prostration, he prolonged the prostration. So the Sahabi says, فَرَفَعْتُ رَأْسِي وَإِذَا الصَّبِيُّ عَلَىٰ ظَهْرِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ So one of the prostrations, when the Prophet took long, I took a peep to see what's happening and I found that the boy was on the back of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, I put my head down and I continued. When the Rasul finished the prayer, Everyone noticed this prolonged sujood, prolonged prostration. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, innaka sajadta bayna dhahranay salatika sajdatan ataltaha, Ya Rasulullah. You went into sujood sometimes and you prolonged it in some cases. Hatta vananna annahu qad hadatha amrun aw annahu yuha ilayk. We thought either something happened to you or we thought maybe you are busy receiving revelation. And the Rasul said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kullu dhalika lam yakun. It's none of that stuff. Walakin nabani irtahalni, fakarihtu an u'ajjilahu hatta yaqdiya hajatahu. He said, my grandson was on my back. And I did not want to get up that he may fall or be disturbed. So I stayed in sujood until he got off. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not shy away from showing patience or love to his children or grandchildren publicly or privately, even in his prayer. So to the case of his granddaughter, Umama. Now just remember the word Umama. It's very similar to the Arabic word Amama for the turban. Keep that in mind. I'll come back to that. So Umama bint Zainab, granddaughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom he loved very, very much. And remember, we're talking about these cases in a context at the time when it was not fashionable to show public affection to any of your children and it was considered unmanly specifically for a man in fact a betrayal of being a man to show compassion towards little girls because don't forget just prior to this people used to bury their daughters alive so umama binti zainab binti rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wasallam imam bukhari documents that Abu Qatada, Abu Qatada, radiallahu an, he said, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُصَلِّي وَحَامِلُ أُمَامَ بِنْتِ زَيْنَبْ فَإِذَا سَجَدْ وَضَعَهَا وَإِذَا قَامَ حَمَلَهَا He said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came to mosque and he carried his granddaughter on his shoulder. And while praying, he continued carrying her on his shoulder. Until he went into sujood, he would put her down, and when he finished the sujood, when he got up, he picked her up and he continued praying. Now, there's a humorous incident regarding this loving action of the Prophet ﷺ towards his granddaughter, Umama. There was a respected sheikh, a very well-known incident. 
while praying salah his amama fell on the ground so when he went into sujood he picked up his amama and put it on while making salah so people are very critical of all of these things someone said musalli said to him sheikh you're a sheikh and your amama fell and you picked up your amama in your salah and the sheikh humorously replied إِذَا كَانَ النَّبِي يَرْفَعُ أُمَامَ فِي صَلَاتِهِ فَلِمَاذَا لَا أَرْفَعْ عَمَامَتِي فِي صَلَاتِهِ If Rasulullah could pick up his umama in his prayer, why can't I pick up my umama in my prayer? A bit of humor, but lesson learned, and the Prophet appreciated. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ